Hello everyone, Noah Novels here, and welcome back to my Review Starlight episode discussion and analysis video series. Today we will be going over episode 2 of the anime titled The Stage of Fate. With that being said, let's hop into the discussion of the episode. So the episode starts off with us seeing the day after the review of Passion, showing us the aftermath of Karen's unexpected entering of the review battles, one particular thing being Hikari deciding that she does want to live in Karen and Mahiro's room after declining Karen's offer to do so in the first episode. One thing I love is how the penalty of talking about the review auditions outside of the underground is getting fined apparently. I would love to see that fine come in the mail and I wonder what the hell it would say. Anyways, after the opening plays, we see Karen desperately try to get information out of Hikari and Juna concerning the reviews but both seem pretty adamant about sticking to the rule of not talking about them outside of the underground for the time being. We get some fun interactions between some of the characters arriving at Saisho around the same time as Karen, Hikari, and Mahiru, including Karen just almost being run over, and then we get a little mini montage of some of the training and exercises that the main cast has to do at Saisho. This short sequence has some really cool character building details that aren't really thrown in your face, but are there to further develop these characters and helping viewers understand where they are emotionally, or psychologically speaking, at the time of this story. And I appreciate that sort of thing. Here are the two that stood out most to me. First off, during the yoga stretching exercise, I want to say it's called a boat pose in real life, but I'm not sure because I'm not really that into yoga, we see Karen giving it her all and really struggling to maintain her form, especially compared to everyone else we can see in the room during this scene who seem to be handling the exercise with relative ease and grace. I think this is a great way of quickly showing that Karen is now putting her all into these exercises, so she can become a star of equal talent as her classmates, worthy of performing together on the stage with Hikari thanks to her newfound determination that we saw at the end of the first episode. But Review Starlight, for as wild as the premise, and the review battles, and the talking giraffe may seem, is a very realistic show. Karen's been coasting by for who knows how long, whereas the rest of the main cast have been giving it their all to foster their theatrical talents and abilities as far as we know. So she's not going to be able to perform at their level when it comes to practicing or exercising, because she has a gap made by a long stretch of time to overcome first. So this brief glimpse of her struggling with this stretching exercise, and also her struggling during singing practice which we see right after, shows both that she is now trying her hardest to catch up with everyone else, showcasing that classic Karen determination that we'll see more of throughout the series, but also that she has quite a ways to go, and she's not getting any main character special treatment that'll make her just as talented as everyone else right away. And this goes a long way because when Karen does win or succeed during the story, it feels much more earned. The next thing to notice is Juna very aggressively glaring at what seems to be Maya. It's brief, but considering what we'll soon learn in regards to how Juna views Maya and Claudine for that matter, it's a nice little way to start building up that element of Juna's character for this episode. Next up we see Karen searching for Hikari during lunchtime, but Hikari uses her expert stealth abilities to evade her and asks the giraffe to drop Karen from the auditions. The giraffe doesn't outright say no but it seems pretty clear he has no intention of banning Karen from the review auditions. After we see Hikari be approached by Nana and offered some delicious banana pudding to which Hikari foolishly declines, she will burn for that. We are treated to a dazzling and impressive dance practice session between Maya and Claudine that has the entire class, or at least everyone in the room at the time, in awe of the pair's talent. Thanks to Karen giving us a little backstory on the two of them, and the previously mentioned awe of the classmates, viewers are shown that Maya and Claudine are definitely the top stars of the class. Juna has a brief outburst saying that anyone who just wants to admire Maya and Claudine should leave, and the instructor tries her best to shut that awkwardness down by having everyone pair up to practice some dancing. Nana claims Hikari as her partner, maybe so she can get revenge on her for not accepting her delicious banana pudding earlier, and Karen and Juna end up being stuck with each other as partners. During the dance practice, Karen tries to get more info out of Juna concerning the reviews, which ends up with Juna figuring out Karen wasn't originally supposed to be part of the review auditions, since she never received a text with information that supposedly everyone participating in these reviews are supposed to get. Thanks to the interesting contrast between Karen's confused and upbeat attitude and Juna's serious and almost desperate seeming attitude during the dance practice, we see just how important these review auditions are to her. Juna's on the verge of tears it seems after scolding Karen and realizing she essentially ruined what was probably a guaranteed victory for her in the review of Passion in episode 1. The dance practice ends and shortly afterwards Juna passes out, 
a result of her pushing herself too far. We've seen glimpses of this throughout the episode, Juna running in the morning by herself and practicing the boat pose again in an empty room. Of course, running or practicing by oneself is not bad, quite the contrary. But if you add all this on top of the stuff she already has to do in school on a daily basis, not to mention her erratic emotional state after losing in the Rave of Passion, it's no surprise that she was pushing herself way beyond her limit. It's tough, you know? Knowing when to stop or take it easy, especially if you're in an emotional or insecure state of mind. It's something I struggle with a lot in aspects of my life, and I think that struggle is represented really well through Juna in the episode up to this point. Nana offers to stay by Juna's side until she wakes up. We see a brief glimpse of the following class, missing both Nana and Juna. And after said class, we see Hikari approach Karen about the review auditions, while at the same time Juna wakes up. Juna laments to Nana about not being able to surpass Maya or Claudine, no matter how hard she tried, before saying that she finally got a chance to shine on her own, clearly referring to the reviews, finally showing viewers why they mattered so much to her personally. Hikari tries to dissuade Karen from participating in the auditions, but Karen refuses because she sees it as an important step in becoming able to fulfill her dream of performing Starlight together with Hikari. Hikari is noticeably taken aback, finally showing something besides cold indifference towards Karen for the first time since the end of episode 1, and Karen's phone emits a notification sound signaling that the second day of auditions is commencing. We see Karen's amazing transformation sequence again, and the review of Desire begins. I know it might be early on in the series to say it, but I think the review of Desire, at least song-wise, is one of my favorite reviews in the series. The first minute and a half of instrumentals that slowly build up, while Karen, Juna, and the giraffe all take their turns talking about themselves or the reviews is so epic sounding. And then when Juna does start singing, you are treated to Hinata Sato's, again sorry for any mispronouncing or butchering of names, beautiful singing voice that also evokes the emotion of Juna's character and what this review means for her, thanks in no small part to the powerful lyrics and intricate design of this review stage. This review is also a visual spectacle, from the great use of color and lighting, to the exciting and well choreographed fight between Juna equipped with bow and arrow and Karen equipped with a sword, to the dazzling animation of both the characters, and the amazingly designed backgrounds of the stage they are fighting on, to the great use of visual symbols such as stars, mirrors, mannequins, and Juna's glasses. This episode is a beautiful culmination of everything we've come to learn about Juna's character both musically and visually, and it uses this culmination of Juna's character to convey an important lesson, that failure is not the end. It can be so easy to think so and get discouraged by it though. When you're constantly surrounded by and reminded of those who are far above you in talent and the same things you are pursuing, it can be hard not to see every failure as catastrophic. After all, you want to be able to make it one day on your own and surpass them, right? And how can you do that if you fail? Especially in a system as rigorous, cutthroat, and competitive as the top star system to be found within the world of the review auditions, failure can often be treated not as the opportunity for growth and change that it should be, but as something terrible to be avoided at all costs. Obviously, I'm not saying you should aim for failure in whatever you set out to do, but having a mindset like that of Juna's that failure is a disgraceful end isn't healthy or productive in any way. And that's why it's so powerful and satisfying when around the 3 minutes and 50 seconds mark, Karen starts singing as well, rebuking Juna's twisted view on failing or losing. One loss, defeat, or failure isn't the end of the road. It's an important opportunity to learn from your mistakes and become an even better version of yourself, one that won't always be losing or failing. It can be hard to see, especially when what you'd love to do can become more of a competition amongst others than something you're just pursuing for yourself. But failure isn't the end. If anything, it's probably closer to the start of a new beginning. Trying to see failure, or rejection, or defeat as something positive is something I still struggle with a lot. And I'm sure it's something that everyone does. After all, losing, or failing, or whatever variation of the word you want to call it, it all does kind of have a negative connotation to it. Especially because for every loser, there's a winner. So listening to this beautiful but also tragic song sung by someone so scared of failure, only to have it invaded, for lack of a better word, by someone who hasn't been jaded by failure or worn down by an unfair system, it's powerful stuff. You can call Karen's attitude, or simple rebuking of Juna's views on failure in the review as naive, but I don't see anything wrong with that. Here's a girl who is simply trying her best in her theatrical pursuits, as we've seen earlier in the episode while she struggled during the stretching exercise and singing. A girl who's just had her passion and love for the theater reawakened. She is what everyone should be when it comes to pursuing the things that you love. 
Not looking to coldly one-up everyone else, not terrified of failure, just trying her best to do what she loves and to do it well. Sure, maybe it's because she's only just started actually trying again, and she hasn't had time to be beaten down by the top star system. But that doesn't make her wrong. If anything, that makes her more right. As we'll come to see, the top star system is flawed, and almost contradictory to why every character in this series wants to be a stage girl. So who better to correct and try to help Juna in this instance than Karen? Someone who is only just entering the world of the review battles and auditions. Someone who is just pure in their desire and pursuits. Someone who hasn't been subjected to and changed by a broken and unfair system. Reaching out to someone who has. Also, I know I said in the last episode I wasn't going to mention the singing, but one, when have I ever been consistent in what I say? And two, Momoyo Koyama's singing as Karen Aijo is too good not to mention. I really don't know how to describe what makes singing good, but Koyama's voice just fits perfectly for the character of Karen Aijo. Upbeat, high-pitched, and passionate, all things that can make one think of Karen Aijo, and they're all present in her voice acting and singing throughout the series. Her singing during the end of episode 1's insert song was exciting, beautiful, and passionate. A perfect combination for Karen's entrance into the review auditions where her passion and spark for theater had just been reignited thanks to what she was witnessing and the promise she made with Hickory. In this song, her voice is a great contrast to Juna's more somber or tragic state of being as of singing this song. And hearing the two of them sing over each other, about their opposing views on failure while battling in the review is genuinely beautiful to watch and listen to. The review ends with the two of them reiterating what they believe and what they're participating in these reviews for, before it all ends with Karen defeating Juna once more and closing out the song on some really powerful lyrics. I get chills every time I hear that part of the song. Also, I'm sure depending on the subtitled version you're watching, that final line might be worded a bit differently, but I'm sure it more or less rings the same regardless of the version you're watching. But with that, the review of Desire, featuring the song The Star Knows, comes to a close. During the last 30 or so seconds of instrumentals, we see Karen take her position zero position once more, the draft questions why Karen wasn't chosen to participate in the reviews from the start, before vaguely understanding it's because her and Hikari share one destiny, and we see a sorrowful Hikari apologizing to Karen for some reason. While the credits roll, we do get one more scene though. Maybe my favorite scene in the episode. Juna is contemplating her loss underneath a fallen stage curtain before Karen finds her, telling her good work during the review. We see Juna pick herself up in over-the-top fashion, before making it clear to Karen that she realizes this one loss or defeat isn't the end. The two become closer, and call each other by their first names and start bantering about nicknames. We also get a really quick look at what appears to be the aftermath of a review audition between Maya and Claudine, where Maya says some pretty intense stuff, and we're shown that she is in the number one spot of the leaderboard for the auditions. The scene between Karen and Juna is so quiet, peaceful, and really uplifting. After watching an episode of Juna in turmoil, we finally get to see the best version of her. One not accepting automatic defeat in Saisho due to the high skill gap between her and Maya and Claudine. One not terrified of failure and seeing it as the end for her. Rather, we see a happy and passionate stage girl who is ready to keep going forward after this loss and become even better thanks to it. She doesn't despise Karen or see her as nothing more than a rival. She sees her as a friend and now friendly competition as well. The top star system in Review Starlight is broken, flawed, and just wears down on anyone who's actually passionate about the craft of theater. But the fact that these girls are able to find themselves again, thanks to characters like Karen, is inspiring and hopeful. Even if you in real life feel like you've lost whatever made you fall in love with what you're pursuing, there's always a chance to reevaluate what you're doing and why. You can remake yourself. Go from wherever you are currently to something more akin to the passion and shine of the stage girls such as Karen and Juna. I mean, I know I struggle a lot sometimes in losing my way, or sometimes feeling like doing the stuff I like to do, like making videos, is more of a chore than something I actually want to do. But this series, first of all, just always manages to put me in the right space and excited to make videos and do other creative stuff again. But it reminds me that almost everyone goes through these sorts of things and it's never too late to change for the better. I don't always have to be complacent in what I love to do like Karen is in episode 1. I don't always have to be terrified of defeat or failure like Juna is in episode 2. I can always reinvent myself to be a better version of the me I was yesterday. That may seem like a simple message or theme, but it's so easy to forget and become overwhelmed by life sometimes. And that's why I think Review Starlight is an important series for how it relays that message. And it does so by showing these characters who all accurately represent different struggles or obstacles when it comes to pursuing what you love. And how to overcome said struggles and obstacles to get back to loving what you do. Being full of shine like the stage girls. That's enough rambling for this video though. 
This is only episode 2, and there is a lot more to talk about in the following 10 episodes. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please tell me what you thought of the video and my analysis or interpretation of episode 2 of Review Starlight. Is there anything you disagree with? Anything I missed? Or anything I said that you agree with and want to expand upon? There's a lot to discuss in Review Starlight, and I'm sure I didn't get it all no matter how hard I tried. So I'd love to talk about this dazzling and unique series in the comments below with everyone. And if you want to see more videos from me, primarily being visual novel reviews and other anime-related content, please consider subscribing to my channel and checking out some of my other videos. And once again, thank you to OtakuBox for editing this video. A link to his channel is in the description, and I highly recommend checking out his videos as well. Thank you as always to everyone watching, and until the next video, see you guys. Oh,